Getting Real with Zeke Thomas, podcast number six. This week's episode features an interview with model actor musician Nikki Dubs. No doubt you've seen Nikki's handsome face in music videos for Taylor Swift or modeling underwear for the likes of Hugo Boss, but you probably didn't know much about his perfectory nature. In this episode, we go deep into his backstory and see how he likes to play outside the studio system, especially when it comes to his music. Thank you all for sharing the podcast with your friends and enemies. You know the strategy. We talked about it last week. Now that you're subscribed on iTunes, you go, you take your friend's phone, you go into their their iPod option, you find iTunes on there, and you hit subscribe on the podcast for them. Hook a brother up, help us out. Speaking of which, you can also follow us on social. Please follow the podcast on Twitter at Getting Real Zeke, where you can get all the latest Getting Real with Zeke Thomas news, including new episodes, BTS pictures, and a sneak peek at who is coming up next on the podcast. Also, don't forget to friend, like, follow, and subscribe to all my personal social network things. Twitter, Zeke is awesome. Instagram, Zeke Thomas is rad. Facebook.com, Zeke is awesome. Periscope, Zeke Thomas. And Snapchat, Zeke Thomas is rad. If you need a fix on that YouTube, hit subscribe at Murderbot Productions and or Black Box TV. And if that can't help you out, ZekeThomas.com for everything else. Other things you should know. If you want to reach out to the podcast, write an email. Hit us up, info at, I think that's it. I think it's at, I think it's info. Hit us up at info at ZekeThomas.com and be sure to reference the podcast. Today's guest comes to us through my dear friend, Joe LaCicero. Joe and I met a number of years ago training MMA. And let me tell you guys, in addition to his strong improv skills and his uh, all too handsome face, this guy is a hell of a kickboxer and grappler. He's such a dick. What, what doesn't he have going for him? Anyways, he's got some super secret projects that I'm sure he can't wait to tell you about, but let's just say it involves a room. There you go. Perhaps I've already said too much. All right. Well, you guys know the deal. It's that time to pick up that tray and get perfectory because we're about to get real with model actor and musician, Nikki Dubs. Ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to another edition of the Getting Real with Zeke Thomas podcast, the podcast where we deconstruct some of Hollywood's greatest people, some of sports and entertainment, politics, all the above. We cover all these aspects, but more importantly, it's mostly about uncovering the origin stories of people whose names you might recognize, but whose origin stories you might not know. And today is no different. Today, we have a very special guest from the world of modeling acting, fashion, music, you name it, he's done it. Please welcome Nikki Dubs. Hey, hey, man. How you doing, Zeke? <laughs> you, Nick- look, you, you look beautiful today, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you, yeah. Nikki. I appreciate it. you. You look uh, terrific yourself. Man. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely keep in shape and, uh, you know, you, you look uh, camera ready today. I'm rather impressed. Well, I try. You know, I never like to leave the house unless I'm looking, you know, a little taped up and looking nice. You know, for the ladies, in case, <laughs> you know, like ladies... Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Nikki Dubb's work, Nikki is a model. He's an actor. He's an R&B singer. He's a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. He's a visual artist. He's a trombonist, a Mm -hmm. trombone player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll play for you later. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I play classical. I play jazz. You know, I can improvise a little on the trombone. How long have you been playing trombone? Oh, since I was a little kid, you know, like I, I, I did the regionals, you know, I, I started in band, you know, I just, I, I knew I loved it. The trombone, I, I like to call it my tray, you know. Your tray? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I'm on the tray, man, it's like, oh, like I can feel it and like everything is is musicality to me, man. It's like, yeah, like I can see the whole world. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I feel the same way. I mean, like I, I, I picked up trumpet at an early age and like that's oh, what yeah, yeah, yo, we should jam, man. Yeah, that would be that would be great. I think you're going to be considerably better than me. I, I oh, I'm, no, man, no, 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 I'm sure you're really good. Um, no, really, I'm terrible. I haven't played in years. I, you know, I, I sort of moved on to some other instruments: guitar, uh, bass, you know, drum, stuff like that. Oh, that's. I don't dope, know if man, I could even dope. make. I could even make a sound at this point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's. In addition to being a trombonist and a fashion designer, an actor, a singer, model, all these amazing things, you're also a motivational speaker, and an adventurer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I just, I look at it like I'm always in the public eye, you know, and there's not enough people 
that people could look up to. I'm trying to give a positive message. Like right here on my arm, you can see, uh, obviously, the people listening can't see, but I have perfectory tattooed on my arm to remind me every day to try to live my life in a perfectory way. And that's how I want to get across to my fans that like, yo, if you're going to go out and do something, don't, don't just do it. Make it perfectory, you know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> listen, you know, if nothing else, you got to go out there and be perfectory. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been saying that my entire life, you know? That's, yeah? Yeah. For real? Yeah. Oh, that's dope, man. T- tell me about it. I mean, did you, uh, did it just come to you in a vision as far as like getting it tattooed or is it just like one day you're just like, you know, I got to try harder? I, well, I gotta... it, it, it was, I was thinking like, I knew I wanted to be a positive influence on the world and so I needed something like like uh, something that that would stick with me that I could remember that would remind me to be positive every day. You know, like, I don't know, people people go out and they'll, they'll do stuff, but it's, it's, it's not perfectory. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Just be perfectory, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely, man. You got to inspire people to be better. You yeah, gotta... yeah, yeah. So uh, talk to us about your journey into into essentially superstardom. I mean, you and I met in an acting class. So like, yeah, yo, that was so dope. I remember I walked in the first day and I saw you. I was like, oh, this is this is like my boy. Like I I knew because I was new to L.A., you know, and I was like, oh, I know I could get along with this kid. Like you were sitting there and, you know, like I saw you and I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know, you came right up to me and, and just started, uh, you know, we just started cutting it up and it was great, man. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, not many people. That's not very a very LA thing to do. And I think the fact that you were from uh, Long Island, was... no, see, but like that, that's what I'm trying to say. Like LA people, they're, they're it's always negative, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's why I'm trying to bring uh, uh, positivity to to the world. Like when I see somebody that like, oh, they look like they they're they're a dope kind of guy, you know. Like I want that guy in my life, you know. Like I'm I'm gonna stay in touch. I, I want you a part of me, you know. So like. We, we could build a universe of perfectoriness around each other. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, that was like when I first met you, I was just like, okay, this, this guy is definitely a character <laughs> and he doesn't think like everybody else. Nah, nah, yeah. And uh, in uh, shout out to Vinny Chase in his acting class. Yeah, where, yo, where Vinny had... Chase, what up, my boy? <laughs> I miss you, brother. Um, you know, we, we both learned a lot and, uh, yeah. you know, was, and obviously made some, some friends and acquaintances along the way. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I obviously stopped doing a lot of on camera work, uh, not soon after that, but that's just sort of where my career took me. But for you, it seemed like your career was just sort of beginning to take off after that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because yeah. a lot of people know you from the, uh, Taylor Swift music video yeah, that we yeah. got, uh, you really blew up. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, it was dope. Like, uh, Taylor, she was real cool. You know, we got along. We we had some really fun, cute scenes together, you know? Like, I was playing the male lead to her, and it it felt like we had, like, a real connection there, you know? So, like, that that was dope. And and then after that, like, you know, people loved it, man. They were like, oh, who's who's that guy? He's dope. Like, uh, I, I want to know who he is. I was like, yo, I'm Nikki Dubs. <laughs> 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 exactly. And then yeah, your Twitter yeah. started blowing up, I'm sure. Uh-huh. Social media started killing it, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, people people ask asking me for this and that, you know. So so I was I was sign, I was signing autographs with people. That was the first time I signed autographs, nice. you know, like for only like 20 bucks. You know, like I I I'll send them my headshot and 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 they love it, you know, like they'll send back thank you letters and love notes and stuff and You you charge people for signed headshots? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You know, I got to hustle. I yeah, got to hustle. No, I'm still a hustler, man. I'm trying to make a living out here. Like, you know, it, not everything's easy. Absolutely. No, of course, man. You, the, the hustle muscle is strong with you. Like, I get it. I, I totally I totally see why why you do what <laughs> hustle, you do. Hustle, hustle, hustle. <laughs> <laughs> is that one of your songs? <laughs> it, it is now, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go home and lay down that fat track. You ready? I'm going I'm to freestyle for you. Hustle, hustle. Every day I hustle. You like Richie Dubs. I got all the muscle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. You heard it here first, man. That's a, that's a Nicky Dubs original. Yeah, right this there. will be the next number one yeah, hit. Don't you anybody feel me? sample that, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. Copyrighted, copyrighted, Nicky Dubs. There you go. <laughs> so uh, after that gig, that that gig with Taylor Swift, your your life really sort of changed. Your your profile. I mean, you were you were obviously a model before that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you you know you were making your living as a model for the last couple of years, mm-hmm. and uh, you know you're obviously an actor. But 
what happened after after that? Like, so did did you start branching out into other things, or did Hollywood come knocking? And then... well, it, nah, it was it was more like I branched back into what I was originally a branch of. You know, like I grew up playing music, and and the modeling and acting is cool, but like. The, it was calling me, man. Like my musicality, like was always speaking to me, and I was like, "Why am I not doing this?" You know. So that's when I, I was like, "I got to be doing this." You know. Sure. Yeah. So, so as far as that goes, you're uh, you're making probably a good living being a model and an actor, but you know, you really feel like you need to sort of go back to your roots. So did the. Did your agent, your manager start getting you out there and have the studios oh, well, and the I, me- I, major I, record labels reaching out to you? Being no, like, like I I, I kind of like broke away from my agents and managers because it always felt like they're trying to tell you to do this. They're trying to tell you to do that. And when you're trying to be a, 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 a creative person and, and, and make your own music, you know, you can't be having somebody telling you what they like or don't like, you know, because, like, they don't know what's dope. I know what's dope. And if I want to make something dope, I can't be told, like, no, 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 that like, that's not dope. Right. Yeah. Right. You feel me? I- so, like, I was, like, like I, I don't know. I had some meetings with people, but I was thinking the whole time, like, man, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, like, I, I just, I just want to make my own music because, because, like, I, if I want to lay my tray down on a sick beat, you know, like I got a sick beat and I want to lay the tray over that, and somebody tells me like, no, 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 the tray's not dope. Well, then that's not my music, you know. I got to do what I got to do, and if I know it's dope, I'm gonna lay that tray down, and boom, then you got a sick tray solo, you know. So it's a boom, 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 and then boom, 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 you know, like hit him with the tray at the end. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody loves dubstep with with trays on it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just anything. Well, like when you could, if you have a skill in an instrument it, it doesn't matter what the instrument is you know like that's that's how i speak through my soul yeah some people speak through guitars and uh through pianos but for you it's the tray yeah plus nobody's doing that you know so like i'm i'm laying my own yeah, niche you're staking in the music claim world. to to the tray yeah 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 and that's what makes you unique yeah everybody's gonna know nikki doves on the tray yeah <laughs> So uh so you start doing that. Now eventually you uh by going independent, you you move to Atlanta, correct? Yeah. Is that that that's where you call uh home these days? Like you you're based out of Atlanta. Yeah, the yeah, time? you know like that that's where I'm residing. I got my best friend who's living down there with me and he's on the guitar. Okay. You know, and so we kind of teamed up and I had some really like I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed to like meet the people I've met. Uh, I, I have access to a beautiful studio down there, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I've been playing music festivals down there. Like, I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. And, and so, but consequently, you know, you didn't fly all the way out here just for my podcast. You're, uh, you're out here cause you were playing Dodger stadium. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. This is, oh, uh, thank you. Thank you universe. You know, like this is a real blessing. There's a, they're, they're, they're playing like an exhibition Little League game down at Dodger Stadium. And they said I could get the spot afterwards. And I, I was like, yo, no way. Like, I'm going to get to play in Dodger Stadium. Nice. So was yeah. it a full crowd out there? Uh, uh No, because like we, 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 since we played after the game, I mean, we had a real nice crowd. You know, like it was real, real nice. But we, we put them all behind home plate. That way I could play like a more personal audience like – you know, like I, I was on the pitcher's mound, and my band was around me, and oh, you know, nice. it was unbelievable. To look around and see the stadium. Yeah, that's that's incredible. That's, yeah, that's definitely incredible. <laughs> yeah, I'm blessed, man. So I want to. Uh, so I mean, that sort of takes us to where we are these days. You know, where where you're, you have all these different things going on. Yeah. Clearly, you know, you're all about the music right now. Yeah. Uh, have you turned your back on modeling? For, or do you still do that from time to time? Well, I mean, like, if there's people listening who want to hire me, I'll do it. You feel me? Like, yeah, yeah. But I'm not, I'm not pursuing it full time because, like, I found my passion, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm doing it. I'm going to make it big. I'm going to do it till I die, man. Talk to me a little bit about your, uh, your, fashion, your fashion line. Oh, your well, I went to FIT in New York. That's actually what I went to school for. You know, so like that's a big part of my brand and who I am, you know? And I have a brand called Be Perfectory. You know, and and we, you know, we put like this sick design on it where it's got like, it kind of looks like an Illuminati symbol, Mm -hmm. you know, except it says like be perfectory across it. And I'll, I'll, I'll make like, uh, cut off pants, you know, but like maybe only one leg is cut off or like I'll make it out of cargo shorts where I I cut the bottom off the pockets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what, what would you wear underneath them? Like, would you, would you wear some like, oh, like here's a nice one. Like like, explain to me 
what the perfect way to wear your 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 clothing designs would be. Oh well, if you're trying to be perfectory now, you're trying know, to you be gotta, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> If you're trying to be perfectory, what you, what you really got to do is just like when you're looking at your closet or you're looking in the store, is not to think like, oh, what would that guy wear, or like what's cool right now. It's like, what do I feel? Who am I? You know, and then and then when you have that, then then the clothes just speak to you. Mm. You know, so so one day maybe yeah, I'm I'm wearing wool leggings and like a a, a speedo over the top of a pair of cargo shorts, mm-hmm. but the next day maybe it's just like a straight long dress. You know, but I'll sew it up in the middle. You know, so it kind of looks like pants. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that yeah, makes you like a lot that. Of sense. I, see, I like I see that. You liking that. That's nice. No, that's good. You know, yeah. it's it's funny just because. You know, I uh, I'm not too adventurous in my fashion choices. I'm pretty I'm pretty basic. But what are some of the uh, some of the basic items that you think every every man should have in his closet in order to try to aspire to be perfectory? Like, what are what are like okay, the essentials? Okay. Well, you, I I, I mean, obviously, what, what, what goes a long way for somebody like you who's not too adventurous? Hold yeah. on, let, let, let me take you in. You know, is is uh like like you could touch it up a little bit, just like. With a couple accessories, mm. you know, you wear like uh, some Buddhist beads as a bracelet, but you make that an anklet, you know. I like that, right? You okay. know, like so real simple. You don't have to go crazy, but just accessories, like make your own chains and stuff. You know, like a shoelace, and you find something to put like on the shoelace. Like maybe you found like an old buffalo head nickel. You know, like that would be dope. Like that, that, that could be you. But if like if it's not you, you got to find what speaks to you. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yo, like. And and if you're trying to do something different, like up top, you yeah. know, like a beanie goes a long way. You you wear like a beanie off to the side, you know, you wear that loose, and and it'll frame frame your jaw like that, and you look real nice. Nice. Yeah, man, that's dope. <laughs> do you have a lot of? Uh, I mean, I mean, you got me thinking in so many different ways here. Do you have like rules for like footwear? Like, I mean, who do you admire in the fashion game that you're just like these guys are great? They're original. I aspire to to one day be as famous and and as big as these guys. Like there's a lot I, there's a lot of beautiful wonderful designers out there, but really the person the only person I'm looking up to is me because mm-hmm. that's all I have, you know? Like yeah, 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 like Michael Kors might be doing some nice stuff, but I I'm not Michael Kors. I sure. can only be me. So like my idol would have to be me. You know, so like I can only take my own creative advice. Sure. You don't want anybody telling you anything else or influencing right, right, you. Right, right, right. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess that sort of leads me into my next question, but I guess it's, <laughs> it's already answered. Do you have any mentors in the business? <sighs> yeah, well, I, I would have to say my dad. Oh, OK. Yeah. My tell, dad's tell, always been there for me, you know. And you know what? That takes us into the next segment of the uh, segment of the podcast. What? Um, tell me about your upbringing, what it was like, you know, uh, take us back to the moment when you first realized, you know what, I want to be involved in everything. Oh, I know, I know this. I know this for you sure. You know this one? Yeah, because like it was a special moment to me. I think about it every day. You know, like I still talk about it with my dad. Yeah. It was it was at my sister, little sister's communion. You know, I was two years older than her, and it was at her communion. And 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 the whole family's a big Italian family, you know. And and she's singing like she was singing Amazing Grace, you know. And and that was like the the final like. You know, it was a big thing for the family, you know, and 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 as she's about to hit the last note, mm-hmm. right, I come running out with my tray and just hit like the sickest note and hold it for like 20 seconds, man. Like she's about to hit her final note and I come out and go, boom, you know, hit him with that with that tray and put put a little bum 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 on yeah. it, you know, and my dad stands up. He goes, yeah, yeah, that's my boy. That's my boy. He's going to be a star. And that's, you know, like from that moment, man, I knew like this is what I want to do. And then from then on, it just sort of took off. Yeah. So, do you feel like your dad's been your biggest supporter, or like, oh, tell, yeah, tell, yeah, tell yeah. me about your parents? Like, all right. Well, like my my dad. Yeah, I mean, my dad's number one man. He's <laughs> like, if if anybody's perfectory in my eyes is him, and he's not even like a creative person. He just he he had a furniture store, mm-hmm. you know, and he worked real hard to support us, you know, and and all he ever wanted was for his boy to be a star. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> So, and your mom, was she a stay-at-home mom, or did she work in the furniture store? Yeah, yeah. No, she stayed at home. She raised us. She did the uh, the mother thing. You know, she she cooked nice. She makes some real nice ziti. She makes the monogata Thanksgiving. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, what's, uh, what's your favorite dish she ever made? Oh, I like her lasagna. Yeah? Yeah, when she cooks, cooks up lasagna real nice, you know, and it just kind of like melts in your mouth. and That's yeah. a sign of a good lasagna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is your is your sister in the in the business at all, or what what does she do? Oh no, she's in school right now. Yeah, 
What is she studying? I, I think she's still trying to figure it out, you know, but she's doing like the liberal arts thing right now, which is great, you know, because then you could explore all sorts of new horizons. And I don't know, like, I, I love my sister, man. She, she, she's she's going to make something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful, man. I had a question for you because, you know, like uh, one of the things that, that I've noticed is that usually with a lot of my guests, if if they're involved in the arts or entertainment and their parents come from a non-arts background, usually there is a lot of conflict there because like they're just like how are you going to make money singing dancing doing whatever you know you need to find like a trade you know like like furniture or you know <laughs> plumbing or like anything like that have you ever had a backup plan nah, or ever nah, felt like man there is no backup like there plan. there was ever any doubt in your mind that you would be successful come on man <laughs> <laughs> no i mean there's doubt sometimes you know but like i know this is this is who i am and who i'm going to be you know, you can see I have that tattooed on my bicep. And, and like, I, I couldn't have been more blessed that my father, like, this is it, this is what he wanted. You know, he's like, my, my son's going to be a star. So, like, everything I do is because he's there, you know, right behind me. So, like, there's there's no going back. <laughs> sure. No, of course not. But that's great that you've, you've always had the support of your family the entire time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, are you current? Are you married? Are you currently seeing somebody? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm keeping my options open, you feel me? You know, like, yeah, you know, like, I don't know, maybe. There, I, there is a girl. There's a girl um, who's maybe kind of alike, you know. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So single, out there, still doing your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, no kids? No, no, no. I may some someday though. You yeah. know, like, yeah, I, 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 I think it's my duty to spread my positive, perfectory thinking. You know, like, and if and if I could spread that to my children, that would be beautiful, man. So I've I've noticed over the years you've really embraced the concept of motivational speaking. So you you sort of branched out with your your perfectory. Yeah. Concepts. Yeah. And not only are you applying it to fashion and, and music and all these different things, but you even started public speaking engagements where, you know, it seems as though, at least according to your Instagram, like you're blowing up. You're speaking to, <laughs> to, to, to tons of people. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it's, it. You know, I kind of I, I make it a mix between my music and my public speaking. I feel like everything is a forum to let me be me. You mm-hmm. know, so if I'm going to go somewhere and they're going to hear me play my tray. I could have an interlude, you know, where, like, I could speak to you about your life. Or if you're coming to hear me, like, try to help you be a better person, you know, like, how to motivate yourself to go out and be a star, be perfectory, you know. You know, part of that is is having something to remind you. You buy my T-shirt, you know, you have it on a T-shirt, you look in the mirror, you go, yo, I'm going to be perfectory today. So, you know, I, I got to throw a plug in there, you know, because yeah. hustle, hustle. <laughs> but, yeah, you feel me? Like, I'm not going to do anything if it has, like, a negative vibe to it. So no matter what what I'm doing, whether I'm, like, in a music video or, or, or I'm singing to you or I'm rapping to you or I'm just talking to you, like, I want to make sure I make your life better as as as, as much as mine, you know? <laughs> so, you know, uh, I, you know, I'm a big fan of yours, but there are some people out there um, in the Internet. You know, the Internet talks a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially on Twitter and and the Twitterverse is a crazy place. But they uh, you do have your fair amount of haters out there. Yeah. You, you can't ignore that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you say to them or the people that question your level of talent? Oh, I just, I, I got to throw love out there, man. You know, there's always going to be haters that could be questioning, but, you know, like that might just be like a part of who they are. Maybe they, they got some uh, in, in insecurities in them, you know, because like if all I'm giving you is positivity, that negativity is coming from someplace else. You feel me? So like, I just got love for you, man. Like you got love for your haters. Yeah, of course. Of course. You know, there's 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 always gonna people be people who don't get it. I mean, if you don't get it, like maybe maybe you're a little retarded or something. But like, yeah. <laughs> I just you know I just throw one in there. But for real though, like I got nothing but love for everybody. So I I was doing some deep digging on your uh, on your your CV, your resume, if you will, uh-huh, and uh-huh. Um, I saw under special skills it said. Cocaine aficionado. <laughs> well, uh, it, it depends who's listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we are broadcast all across the interwebs. But 
that shouldn't stop you from talking about it. Because, I mean, if you're listening, listing this as a, as a special skill, um, I kind of wanted to know a little bit more about it. Like, why? <laughs> like, what makes you an aficionado of cocaine? It's it's just that it's it's been a part of my life, you know. Like Dr. Freud used to use it, and we wouldn't have Dr. Freud without him. So I figure, like, yo, know, if he can open up the the psychologies of the mind, you know what I mean? Like I can open up the psychologies of my heart mm-hmm. if I use you know the same sort of thing. So like to me, it's a tool to to greater express my perfectory nature. You know, you feel me? I do. I do feel you. Do yeah. you use any other drugs to sort of, uh, have you tried any, any others? Yeah, well, do... you, you got to smoke a little weed sometimes, you know. There you go. Who doesn't? <laughs> have you done anything? Uh, have you ever tried heroin? Math? No, 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 no. Any no. hallucinogenics? Nah, like, I, I, I like to stick to like the tried and true methods, you know, like I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do a couple lines and then I'll smoke a J and then boom, I'll lay down a sick track and I'll be like, ah, you know, like I hit them nice like that. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. So, uh, is that where you where you sort of channel your inspiration for a lot of your your because a lot of your visual art, a lot of your fashion? Do you? I mean, does it allow you to sort of get to the get to that special place where where all of a sudden inspiration strikes you? Yeah, yeah, of course, man. Yeah, that, like that's I I I don't know. Like, what's what's your experience? Like, where where are you coming from with this? Like, are you, are, you, are you familiar with like? How how to achieve like the inner workings of your mind through different substances? Because to me, it's not like oh, I'm doing drugs. To me, it's all like, what part of my brain am I gonna use right now? You know, so like if if I'm in this zone, it's gonna be all like I'm gonna lay down like a like a fat rap. You know, like I'll be all yo, we're here with Zeke making a podcast. Yo, how long will this last? But then boom, I'll hit some other shit. I open up another brain. I go ah, I'm living and life is good. You know, you feel me? But, like, you can't access those different parts of your brain, like, if you're not unlocking them with certain keys, you know? And then that's how you make that shit dope, man. And those keys, in this case, happen to be cocaine and alcohol and drugs. For me, yeah. But, like, yeah. I don't know what it's going to be for somebody else. You feel Absolutely. me? Absolutely. For, yeah. for everybody else, it's completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope, man. That's dope. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about your your catchphrase. Be perfectory. Yeah. yeah um, I mean... It just seems like, uh, like, you know, it seems like it's everywhere these days. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. It's getting out there, you know, like, it, and it should be, man. It should be everywhere. Like, I feel like if the whole world just, like, let be perfectory into their hearts, we'd, we'd live in a better place, you know, like, there wouldn't be wars. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, look, look at the conflict in the Middle East. You know, like, if, if you were people wearing Be Perfectory t-shirts and they're about to, like, bomb somebody, but then they see that t-shirt, Maybe they'll think twice, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, that's what I'm trying to do is, like, spread that perfectoriness to the world. And and, and maybe that could bring world peace. Seeing all the things you've accomplished at your your young age. How old are you? 23. 23. What, you know, one of the things we like to do is deconstruct sort of what makes you so successful. Do you have any uh, daily habits or a morning ritual you do every morning when you get up that sort of sets you on the right course to uh, throughout your day? Yeah, I mean... Number one, wake and bake, wake and bake, wake and bake. <laughs> you know, because then, then is everything's nice from there. But like, maybe I'll wake up and like before I even get out of bed, like I'll bust a freestyle based on my dreams. You know, to make sure my creativity is flowing. You know, and I'll be all like, I'll think back about my freestyle and be like, yeah, that was dope. And then I'll get out of bed and maybe eat some fruit or something. You know, keep it healthy and then go to the gym. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Obviously, you're in great shape. Is there a, is there a specific workout uh ideal that you follow are you like way into like olympic lifting or just straight bodybuilding powerlifting are you I, 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 I kind of mix Ripito? it up like i'm not i just i'm trying to stay fit and i could be a little fitter you know like i'm uh, i'm i'm not in the best shape right now but that's because i'm focusing on other things but like as long as i do a little something every day maybe i'll just get on the bike you know or i'll hit the bench press it's just it's simple i'm you know, like, I, I keep it simple, but, like, I work hard when I'm in there. I just break a sweat. Sure. Yeah. Of course, you got to do that. Yeah. Obviously, uh, to me, it seems like you're you're in, in terrific shape. Thank um, you, man. You are, too. You, you look, you're looking dope over there, man. Like, you look fit and cut. Like, like what do you do, man? Like, maybe I could take some tips from you. I, I mean, I sort of dabble in everything. You know, yeah. I, 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 I surf. I do some CrossFit. I, oh, lately, what? I've been really into Olympic lifting, which Very has sort of cool, been my man. thing. Yeah. Uh, that's not always conducive to a great physique, but it's a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and you know, occasionally I'll train, uh, you know, some some MMA or some jujitsu. Oh, that's dope! Like you do MMA and stuff. Like you could beat me up. Uh, I don't know about that. But nah, yeah, man, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to fight at all, man. Like I bet, I bet you could beat me up. That's really cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know, in the last couple of years, I sort of. Taking a step back for just because work's been so okay, crazy, that's but still, that's still dope, man. Yeah, but whenever work slows down, though, I like I just throw myself Yo, into Zeke it. Yo, Zeke the badass, Zeke, Zeke, Zeke will whoop your ass. He'll <laughs> Olympic lift and some jujitsu kicks on you. You know, like he's gonna fuck you up. Everybody, let it be known. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's probably the sickest rhyme anyone's ever written. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. So uh, do you have a specific diet that you follow? Like, I mean, obviously, you know, I, you, you try to get in your workouts where you can. Yeah. But uh, you mentioned fruit because you're trying to stay healthy. Any uh, – what advice – I mean, I mean, because you're in such great shape, everyone's always looking for an edge or like a hack. Uh, what sort of diet do you follow to sort of maintain uh, your excellent physique? I just kind of keep it simple, man. Like I'm thinking like I just want to eat healthy foods, you know. So like if you're going out to eat – you, you, sushi i like sushi man mm-hmm. you know if i'm staying home i keep it simple I, I keep a lot of peanut butter and like protein shakes around the house mm-hmm. you know and yeah yeah i mean i'm I'm not always the best i cheat sometimes i like my pizza i like my mama's cooking you know so like, sure. <laughs> when i go home it's it, it's all pasta and like all oh, that's that, that's the bomb man oh yeah yeah that's some of my favorite stuff uh-huh so uh, we're rounding third here on the podcast, and this is the part where we try to, uh, you know, we sort of go in the same thought process where we look for advice for for people who are in a similar line of work as you, whether that's your acting, modeling, music production, your visual artistry, your fashion designing, your trombone playing. I mean, you're a jack of all trades and obviously a master <laughs> at a thank number you, of man, them. Thank you. What do you have? What advice would you give to the kid who's sitting in Long Island right now in his in his parents, you know, Oh, well, number, number one, you already know what it is, man. Be perfectory, kid. Exactly. Be perfectory, you know? Like, I'm telling you, like, once you let that get into your mind, it, 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 it'll it just, it'll guide you wherever you need to go in your life, you know? But for real, though, like, on top of that, don't let anybody tell you what you can or cannot do, you know? Because you could do whatever, man. You want to go to the moon, just do it. Don't let somebody tell you, like, no, you got to do this or that. You know, just be on the moon. You know, like that. Literally, just be on the moon. Yeah, you feel me, man. You feel me. <laughs> you know, but, like, you, yeah, you get me, man. So, conversely, uh, advi- the other part of this this question, second part of the question, is advice to someone who's been in the modeling game, yeah, who's been yeah. in, in the singing game, who's been in the fashion game. How did they get to the next level? So, like, almost like they're sort of mid-level, but they want to get – to the next level how do they sort of you know be be perfectory hmm. then some if they've already experienced some success that's a really good question zeke thank you for that um i think like if if you if you just keep your eyes on what it is you know that you're gonna be you know like i was saying like if you're going to the moon man you just got to be there already and eventually one day you'll end up with you there you you know what i'm saying like if you're already there it's just a matter of time till you catch up to being there you know sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> you feel me like, i totally feel yeah, it. yeah yeah what uh who are some of your biggest musical influences oh like there, there's a, there's a long line like i mean i like everything from like count basie i like count basie uh but then i'll i also i like uh kendrick lamar and trey songs you know yeah what do you think of uh, Kendrick's latest album? Uh, it's dope, man. That's just dope. You know, like, yeah, come on, man. Kendrick Lamar's killing it right now. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've sort of been out of the... Uh, I haven't listened to a lot of hip-hop since probably around 1999. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, right, right. Most Def, Talib Kweli, that was sort of my jam. And then after that, I was just like, I'm not really into where hip-hop went from there. Right. Like, it sort of... It sort of you gotta really... do you. You gotta do you, man. Like every, Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Kendrick dropped that album and I and to Pimple Butterfly, and I was just like, okay, now I'm back in. Like, I'm in... Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. He, he dope, sort of man. brought me back in. Uh, that's that's really cool, man. Yeah. Um, you. Grow, growing up, who else influenced you? I mean, out, outside of... Outside of hip hop, who else were sort of your your favorite? um like when I when I was growing up I, I this this is gonna sound funny but like my band teacher you know he he was also a trombone player and so like I would see him every day and I was like man I just want to be like him you know so I would go and sit with him and and we would just 
lay on the trays for days. You know, you feel that lay on the trays. That's another one. I got another single, man. You feel that lay, lay on, on the, the trays, trays for days. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what uh, who what do you watch? Do you watch TV at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes you know when I get time, I like I like Netflix. You know, like I I watch stuff on Netflix. Um. What yeah. are you What are you watching right now? What are you What are you binging right now? Uh, well, I mean, Narcos is real cool, man. Pablo Escobar is a fucking man. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. I'm only like I think like four episodes in, but like, I, it's amazing. It's blowing my mind yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's it's, it's dope, man. It's yeah, real dope. What What else are you watching? Um, well, like I don't know. So sometimes, sometimes I'll throw on like a, a sitcoms. You know, like Gilmore Girls. Is is dope sometimes, you know. Like I, I know it's kind of girly, but like I could be in touch with my feminine side, and I'm not afraid of that, you know. And and it's funny, you know. No, like, no, and you know what? You shouldn't be because you know who who buys your albums. That's true, man. Look at you, man. You're smart, Zeke. See, you know. Like I try to be in touch with who my audience is, and I do. Like I, I sell to a lot of females. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, any any? Uh, what's your favorite movie of all time? Oh, uh, favorite movie of all time maybe, maybe is uh, it's it's either Blow or it's uh, Caddyshack. <laughs> <laughs> Those are two completely different movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What what, what about those movies? Uh, you know, makes you want to watch whenever they come on. Well, I just sometimes like I'll just connect to the way I feel in the movie. You know. And so, like, as I'm watching a movie, I start thinking about my own life, you know, and and those movies make me feel like I can do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, have you ever had a near-death experience ever? Uh, well, I guess we're all inching towards death. That was really dark, my dude. <laughs> Yeah, I can get deep sometimes, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, he spun himself around in the chair. It was uh, rather incredible for those at home. Um, okay, so I guess nothing nothing too crazy, right? No, not you, too crazy. I mean, you know, like fender benders is sometimes where it makes you think like, oh, yo, my dude, am I about to die right now? But like when you really look at it, like, nah, you probably would not have died. Because if you did, like if you were going to die, you'd be dead, right? You right. Know? I've been saying that my entire life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, have you? What's your favorite modeling job you've ever done? Oh, it was probably you know T Taylor Swift. It's sort of like a modeling job because I was looking real nice, you know. But like straight up and down modeling, like I don't know. I've done some un un underwear modeling, and um, sometimes that could be fun, you know, when it's just like a bunch of uh, dudes and jocks hanging around wearing underwear, you know, and like you know just doing guy stuff, you know. And it feels like yeah, man, this is what it's like to be like a jock in a locker room and like we're just hanging out like that could be fun because then it doesn't feel like you're working you're like yo just back with my boys but then boom you know like a month later you're on like a billboard or something you're like yo that's me with my boys just being guys together but like looking dope looking real dope yeah i remember the <laughs> ad campaign when i saw you when you guys were in a uh, in a laundromat yeah 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 you saw that you saw that yeah that was dope like at first when i saw that i was like i don't understand this concept you know like but but then I looked at his other videos, you know, I was like, OK, these are funny, like they're well done. I'm, I'm going to try it out. And then when we were doing it, like I'm like, oh, well, well, it's guys in a laundromat for like underwear. Like, why aren't you wearing clothes? But 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 then like after we finished it, I was like, oh, I get this concept because like if you're working out a lot, you know, you're in the you're in the gym like seven, eight times a week. You got to do a lot of loads of laundry. So like you got no clothes left. You yeah, feel you me? So like, like four or five like, loads oh, a week. Shit, this is brilliant. <laughs> you know, like he's he's on that he's on that plane that like I'm on. Like we're floating together for like uh, but on two different levels, you know, like running parallel like trains into Japan, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like cocaine has had a good effect on you over the years. <laughs> uh, one of the things I like to ask people is, uh, what's your most embarrassing moment? Oh, man. Uh, I would say, uh, oh, that's a good question. So you, um, you, you're making me blush. <laughs> uh, there, there, was, there was one time in elementary school, you know, I was playing on the playground and like these older kids, they came up, right? And... And one of them pants me, 
you know, as we were playing tag and I fell over my shorts, you know, and I was I was wearing chipmunk underwear. <laughs> and everybody <laughs> saw it, man. And I tried running after him, you know, but I kept falling over because I couldn't get my pants up in time. Oh, man, like that was, yeah. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in uh, in five years? Like what in the perfect world, obviously your 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 career and your life is as so far has been on a on an upward tra- yeah, trajectory. Keep moving, keep moving. Yeah, keep absolutely. Moving. Yeah. Where do you see yourself at age thirty five, at age forty? Do you still wanna be doing what you're doing or, or what are you looking to do? Oh yeah, man. I hope I'm doing what I'm doing, plus I'm doing more than what I'm doing. You know, like I hope doors open up to themselves that like open towards themselves so like I can move through different venues of music and modeling and, and acting, and I can put them all together. And really, I just want to be affecting more people in the world. You know, like like I said, I, ideally, like, yeah, I'm trying to play my tray, you know, and yeah, I'm trying to sing to you. But like the end goal, the the main objectifying factor behind it is that, yo, can't we just have world peace? <laughs> you know what? You know? And that's, and I think that's a good place to, to sort of... Le- jump off the conversation. Word, word, word. Uh, world peace, everybody. Yeah, world peace. Be perfectory. Yo, go online. It's NikkiDubs.com. You can find all of my merchandise. You can find my songs. I got a new single dropping. I got my music video coming out. My, You know, like, yo, I'm playing the tray. I got everything for, for you on there. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Before we go, uh, I got mad shit. You can go back and look at my old music videos. And I'm going to keep coming. I'm going to keep coming for you. And I'm going to do it till I die, man. Like, I just want everyone out there to be perfectory and yep. do it. Do it for yourself and do it with me. You know, like, I'm bringing all you up with me. All right? We're going to do this, fam. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Be Nick- dope. Be perfectory. I love you, Zeke, be, man. This was be fun. Be perfectory. Nikki Dubs, yeah. thank you so, for, mu- so much. Yeah, for, of course, for brother. Here. Of course, brother. I doing, much love. Yeah. Doing my podcast. Yeah. And we'll see you guys next time on the Getting Real with Zeke Thomas podcast. This has been an Aussie Cop Media production. Executive producers Noah Kinsey and Brian Nicholas. For more information, visit ozzycop.com. Where? Where?